This video will be on the birds and the bees of RF connectors. We'll talk about the history of the three basic connectors, PL259, Type N, and BNC. Then we'll talk about how to distinguish the gender of all RF connectors. And then we'll talk about how to ensure a good connection of these three basic connectors. And then for many experienced hams and even some professionals that don't know this little trick, we'll show a little trick that could save the day for you sometime working on a site. First, let's get into the history of the three most common RF connectors used in land mobile radio, including commercial, two-way, amateur, military, and uh, aviation. The original connector and the oldest connector out there is the PL259. And the SO239, its mate. They were invented in the 1930s by the Army Signal Corps. And part of the reasoning behind the connector was because of a lot of antennas used was just a wire antenna. They designed it so the center conductor there would take a banana pin connector. The connector is reliable for up to about 100 megahertz. It's called the UHF connector because back in the day, 100 megahertz was considered UHF. And even though it is still used at UHF and even at 8 and 900 megahertz in some applications, uh, it's not the best match. It does have a little bit of loss in it compared to the other two connectors we'll mention but the losses are negligible. The main drawback of the PL259 is uh, the way it screws in. It can be easily unscrewed if it's mounted in a mobile installation and the vehicle is somewhat uh, positioned where the connector is being pulled down by gravity. It doesn't take much vibration for the connector to unscrew and fall out. There are a few other disadvantages there also. But that is the PL259 SO239. Next came the Type N connector, N standing for Neil. Paul Neil was the inventor of this connector. He was an engineer at Bell Labs and developed this connector to be a better RF match and also be good for much higher frequencies and also be able to be pretty much weatherproof. This is the Type N connector. And shortly after the Type N connector came the BNC connector was developed, both the, BN, the N and the BNC were developed by Bell Labs and during the World War II era. The B stands for bayonet, the N stands for kneel, and the C stands for councilman. It is a bayonet type connector, we'll demonstrate that here in a little bit, and the inventors involved were Paul Neal, the same inventor of the Type N connector, and Carl Konselman. So the BNC stands for Bayonet Neal Konselman. Many thinks the C stands for connector, but it actually stands for Konselman. So it's a bayonet type connector named after its two inventors. Again, Bell Labs engineers and during the World War II era in the 1940s. The reason for the BNC was to have a quick disconnect antenna that had the RF abilities of the Type N connector. Now let's get into the birds and the bees of RF connectors. Many people will look at this SO239 
and call it a male because the threads are on the outside. And if this was a piece of pipe used in plumbing, that would be correct. That would be a male fitting. But with coaxial RF connectors, the gender is determined by the innermost conductor. So in this particular case, it is a socket, and thus this connector is a female. And likewise, the type N with the pin in the middle, that's the boy end. And the socket in the middle, that is the girl end. And the type N is likewise. Now let's talk about mating these connectors and ensuring that they have a happy marriage. We'll use the PL259SO239 here. When you make the connection and push the male in, you want to make sure that you have plenty of resistance so you have a good tight fit. And then once you have the connector in, you want to screw the outer shield on very tightly to make sure there's nothing loose, wiggle on it, because you can catch in one of these little catches and be on top of it and you'll have some slip in there. You want to make sure it's extra tight to help ensure that it won't come loose. Make sure you do have a good RF connection. A common problem with PL259, SO239s is you can get a little bit of solder or other material on the outside of the male pin and then when it mates with its mate there it can spread the female sockets out a little bit and you won't have a very good RF connection in that. In fact in a duplex system it could generate noise and uh, create you all types of grief. There's a fix for that by taking a very small blade and just prying on the four pieces of the female socket to pinch them back together. And then mate them again. Make sure that you have a lot of resistance and tighten it up real tight. That guarantees a very happy marriage with the PL259 SO239. The Type N has a similar story. But the biggest, biggest issue with the N, if you don't line them up perfectly before you start to screw the connector together, you can cause the male pin to actually work itself to the side of the female socket, thus pushing the little uh, one, one of the four pieces of the socket farther in. Should that happen, uh, the fix would be the opposite. Stick your little tool in and just kind of bend it back out. Another issue with type N's and also with BNC's, which we'll get into next, they make 50 ohm and 75 ohm N and BNC connectors. The 75 ohm male has a more slender diameter pin, and of course the female socket would be uh, tighter in diameter. So if you were to inadvertently connect a N 50 ohm male to a female 50 ohm type N, the male pin would push the four little pieces of the socket out farther, just like what happens with the SO239 with a piece of solder or whatever on the male pin. The fix would be the same. So if you need to mate a N, uh, excuse me, if you need to mate a uh, 50 ohm male with a 75 ohm female, try not to screw it in as tight and uh, only do it if you need it to get you out of a pinch because that's all you have available and you got a situation, you got to get something on the air right now. And uh, also make sure that you go in with a little hemostat or small needle nose and, and push her back together. So when uh, she mates with uh, the proper connector again, it'll work and they'll be happy. The BNC doesn't have the issue of not lining it, lining it up correctly like the N does, but you still have the uh, 50 ohm male 
into a 75 ohm female issue that if you ever have to do you need to uh, correct uh, her to make sure that uh, she's pinched back together so she'll fit against the next connector uh, properly there and the beauty of the BNC is it's a let me see if I can hold the camera and do this at the same time with one hand and then it's a simple twist to get it on it ain't coming out no matter what you're going to pull the wire out of the connector the cable out of the connector before the connector would ever come out that's the beauty of the BNC my personal opinion the BNC should be the universal and should have been since World War II the universal standard RF connector for all radio equipment regardless of service uh, it's in with the exception of high power amplifiers it's it's a flawless connector it will not come out once it's in and that's the great beauty of it and it's just a simple bayonet push and twist or twist and pull to get it out that simple to use the BNC connector wonderful connector they should all be that way and and this little trick here which many experienced hams and even some professionals are not aware of this really exemplifies the beauty of the type N and BNC connector let's say that you have driven to a tower site long ways and a lot of miles you're hot you're tired you're going up because you got a transmitter off the air you took a chopper to the site which costs a ton of money or whatever and you do some troubleshooting and you find that uh, there's nothing wrong with the transmitter at all you got an isolator that's failed or a polyphaser in the antenna system or whatever any device in the system that has a type N female on each end there's a real simple little trick to get you by in a pinch and save your rear end like it has mine many times simply undo the type N males and bypass the device by inserting a BNC female double female barrel between the two type N male connectors this can be a lifesaver but it's only good for a temporary fix you would never want to do this and leave it permanently the main reason is because it would be so easy to pull it apart it would take much to pop it apart and then you've got your failure back so it's a good temporary repair I would definitely tie wrap wire whatever to secure that connection the best you can so it doesn't pop apart prior to leaving the site but a good emergency uh, save your day just by uh, using a BNC double female barrel between two type N males um, again be careful if by any chance the female is a 75 ohm say it's a 75 ohm system or for whatever reason you've got a uh, 75 ohm female and a 50 ohm male be careful because the uh, larger diameter of the male pin will spread out the female socket and when you pull it apart um, you need to make sure that you pinch the uh, female pieces of the female socket back together again okay very good a good uh, good little trick uh, to save your tail at a site using a BNC barrel to patch uh, bypass a device that has two N males on it. Seven three.